Okay, here's a tutorial for one, two, three. It's a very quick and easy effect that I like to use as an opener, and I'm going to show you guys two different methods of doing it. For the first one, you need any random card from the deck, and also a duplicate of that card that you put face up in the center. So that's the setup. Now, however you'd like to force this card in the spectator, so it doesn't really matter what force you use, as long as you make sure not to flash that face up card in the center. After you force that card on them, you can get any other two cards selected that are completely random. What I like to do is just slowly thumb through the cards and have them touch two of them. Make sure you do this slowly because you don't want to thumb through too fast and end up getting to that face up card in the center before they're able to select two cards. So now you can show all three of them to the spectator. Now, you don't have to look at these. You can look away, close your eyes, do whatever you want. It's actually better if you don't know what they are. The only thing that's important is make sure that the card you're forcing is on the bottom of these three cards. That's very important that that's on the bottom. You're going to put these three cards back into the deck. Now it's good if you put them more towards the top third of the deck or at least the top half because you want to put them in before that face up card. After they've been put back into the deck, you're going to push them in and catch a thumb break. So you're going to push down on them, push them in, catch a thumb break. Overhand shuffle until you get to that thumb break. So now the spectator's three cards are right here. You're going to thumb off one of them, in jog the next one, and the rest of the cards are just dropped on top. Now with this in jogged card right here, what you're going to do is push up on it and then push in. So now you're going to have a thumb break and you're going to cut the cards right at that thumb break. And what you've done is taken one of the selections, put it on top of the deck, the other selection is on the bottom, and the third selection is lost somewhere in the middle, but you have the face-up duplicate that's in the center. Now you get to split the cards into three piles. Now the spectator can do this, but I prefer just to do it myself, that way they don't accidentally cut to the face-up card in the center, because it forms just a tad bit of a break they can accidentally cut there. Now once you split the cards, the first selection is going to be on top of the packet on your left. The second selection is going to be on the bottom of the packet on your right. And the third selection will be face up in the center. And that is the first method for one, two, three. But now let's get into the second method. The second method is actually completely impromptu, so it has no setup and no duplicates like the first one. I actually like this one better because it's impromptu. The only reason I didn't use it for the performance video is because it's a little bit easier to follow from a magician's standpoint, but for lay people, this method is a lot better. So because it's impromptu, the spectator gets to shuffle the deck, if they like to, it doesn't matter. And after they shuffled, you're going to get cards selected, but we're going to do it a little differently this time. The first card that's going to be selected, you're going to select as the magician. So you get to go through, just take any card, and you're going to look at it and memorize it, but you're not going to show it to the spectator. You're going to take your selection, put it on top, and do the Browie reversal. So if you don't know what the Browie reversal is, I will put a link for a tutorial on the screen. The only thing you're going to do a little differently than a typical Browie reversal is the second packet of cards. You're not going to flip it and put it on top. You're going to flip it and keep it on the bottom. Now what this is going to do is take your selected card and put it face up in the center of the deck. Now you do want it to be as close to the center as possible, so it is important when you're doing the bribe reversal to make sure that the two packets are as equal as possible. Now after your card has been selected, the spectator gets to select two cards. So I just do what I did with the first method, you just thumb through slowly and have them touch two cards. Again, remember to do this slowly so they don't, uh, so that they select two cards before you get to that, your face-up selection in the middle. Now they can look at these cards, you don't have to look at them and make sure that they get them memorized, and then they're lost back into the deck. Again, like with the first method, it's better to have them more towards the top third. That way they're not as close to your selection. Now you're going to push them in and catch a thumb break. Overhand shuffle until you get to the thumb break. Now once you're at the thumb break, thumb off the first selection, in jog the second selection, and drop the rest of the cards on top. Go to the in jog card, push up on it and push in so you catch another thumb break and then cut the cards at the thumb break. And now you have one of their selections on top, the other selection on the bottom, 
and the third selection is face up in the middle of the deck. So basically now we're at the same point we are in the first video. All of the slides are over and you can split the pack into three piles. So for the spectator selection you say watch how fast I can find your cards. So the, again the first selection will be on top of the packet on your left. The sec second selection will be on the bottom of the packet on your right. And now for your card you tell, them, you tell the spectator that they're going to find the card that you selected. So you can have them snap their fingers over this packet or wave their hand or do some sort of magical gesture. Tell them to spread out the cards and amazingly the spectator found your card. And that is the impromptu method of one, two, three. I hope all of this was helpful. But if you're still confused about anything, as always, send me a personal message or leave me a comment and I will see you guys next time.